In today's video, we'll take a look at a really awesome Paladin build for Lords of the Fallen. This deals insane amounts of damage via Radiance buildup to smite enemies with holy damage. You also have lots of survivability and ways to heal up. Plus, it's a really flashy looking build as you get, in my opinion, one of the coolest weapons not too far off in the main campaign. Now, the way this build plays, it's rather simple. You kind of have a few options, of course, in terms of weapons. But for the most part, you're going to constantly imbue your weapons with Radiance damage so that you can create that holy buildup on enemies and not just deal damage with your primary attacks, but also cause zaps of smite damage on them every couple of hits. I found that very few enemies, in fact, are resistant to holy damage so that you can take them down in very few hits. Plus, when the situation calls for it, or if you're left without any healing items, we still have stuff like Healing Radiance and Sanctify to bring us back to full HP. Plus, this build has plenty left in it to also provide range damage. We're gonna use abilities that take down enemies from afar, especially if you're trying to go in areas that are too filled with enemies to deal on one-on-one. -on -one. So our starting class of choice is going to be the Orion Preacher. There are other options to go with. You can also use the Hollowed Knight, for example, but you would reach the same result in no time. And we need the Orion Preacher because you start with the Catalyst that lets you cast the Radiance spells. And you also start with 18 points into Radiance. This is our main stat, the one we want to bump the most, as there's also weapons in there that fully scale up with this stat alone both in terms of your starting weapon, but there's others in there too, like the lightsaber I just showed you. So about 60 into Radiance is what I would focus on, because from that point on, it kind of starts going into diminishing returns, and especially after 75, you're only gaining um, extra scaling in damage every like 3 or so points. So it's almost like in Elden Ring in terms of the hard and the soft caps. From that point on, simply focus on vitality and endurance depending if you want more HP and survivability or more stamina to squeeze in a few more attacks or just like have a few more dodges on top. It's going to be a little bit more favored towards vitality since it helps being tanky and being able to take in damage, mitigate it and not fall off so easily. Now at the start your choices of weapons are a bit limited because there aren't many early weapons that fully scale with Radiance, that's why we went with the Preacher because your Orion Hammer already has a scaling in that, a C- by default but this can be upgraded at the Blacksmith and becomes a bit better. Plus, its movesets are not too bad, it does deal some good damage, it's definitely going to help you in the beginning stages up until you um, reach the flash boss, and it also has a pretty good sweep attack on the sprinting attack. And on top of that, I also found that it's very good at stunning enemies, so if you want to like just make them stop and deal damage against them, it can be a solid option early. There are some alternative weapons too, and especially pole arms. I believe these have some of the best movesets in the entire game. And you can get a Radiant one that scales with Radiance, but you have to finish the game once, and it unlocks with the Radiant class. So as an alternative to that alternative, you can buy one from Stonemoon right here back at Skyrest, but that one doesn't scale with Radiance, so you might need to make a few compromises on the go. But uh, yeah, this is really good if you dual wield it. It has a very good kind of like poke attack and like just single target focus type of movesets that help a ton in tight situations or tunnels and so on. Um, but if you switch it to the heavy attack while dual wielding this, it also has a very big sweep. One of the best in fact, so that you can deal with the hordes of enemies that spawn in the Umbral Realm. And even more so, I really enjoy the dodges and then follow up attacks with the pole arms because you kind of gain this double spin that completely destroys enemies. It's very useful against bosses, by the way. But your go-to weapon eventually is going to be Pieta Sword. So this is that lightsaber I was talking about, very flashy. And you can already get this by the time you reach the flash boss quite early on. You only need about 40 of those Umbral Scourings to buy it from Molhu once you got her Remembrance. So it's going to take just a bit, but I believe in the first couple of hours, if you are very good at it, you can already buy it and achieve this build fully. And in my opinion, this is what's going to make this build amazing. It literally carried me all the way into the end game, especially as I level this up. And absolutely, you can apply Radiance damage to it to further make it stack that holy build up and cause the zaps, the smite damage against enemies. In fact, it's so cool, you're going to completely destroy almost everything in just a couple of hits before that even triggers. 
Now, this is also going to be coupled with a shield in one hand. Yeah, Pieta Sword is just better in terms of movesets, in my opinion, because it can just deal damage in a perfectly frontal cone that doesn't do too much. So, you're just going to have the perfect angle to hit enemies with, even in tight situations. But you also have quite a lot of ranged capability, starting with the Radiant Flare from the starting class, but eventually you can also find the Piercing Light, which is the upgraded and much higher damage version of this. So this is going to be very useful to take down enemies from far away, like if there's any snipers or annoying ones that try to ambush you, you can just hit them from afar from safety in case there's a gap or any other enemies that you might encounter in the meantime. So very, very useful spell that also just couples well with your high amounts of mana by default. Now, in terms of other spells, you can, of course, buy the rest from Dunmire back at Skyrest for just a few hundred vigor, and this includes both a healing, but more important, that Radiant Weapon. So this is something that you're always going to want to have active, as it almost doubles the damage of your attacks. And yes, it absolutely stacks with the Radiance from Pieta Sword, and you will know that the effect is active, as you will see these lingering spiky trails left behind with each weapon sweep. So what this does is that it creates that build up even faster, deals more damage, so those zaps of smite damage come in even sooner. It almost invites you to play recklessly because you see those huge chunks of HP just disappearing even on the toughest bosses. But uh, of course we also have defensive capabilities between the armors and the healing ones. We have healing radiance that again you buy from Dunmire, and this is just a straight up heal that you can cast at any point as long as you have mana in case your Sanguinarix has been depleted. We of course also have the Sanctify, another early on spell, so this you place it on the ground, is going to heal you over time and also cure any build up, like if you have like bleeding or poison, all that kind of stuff, this is going to counter that and like I said, there are many bosses that kind of have a lot of build up, so you do want to counter them in one way or another and the healing over time is pretty good too. And yeah, you can find this, by the way, after defeating Pieta in the tower that normally leads down to Skyrest. Instead, take the stairs up to the top floor, you will find this chest over here and the spell is going to be inside of it. But like I said, your starting armor is going to be pretty bad, this is why you're going to want to change it. So head over right here back at Skyrest and you're going to find Stormund. And he sells a bunch of starting armors, including the one from the Hall of the Night. It only costs a few Gs in there to buy it, but it's going to be worth it. Even though it's only medium, the defenses on it is really great. And in my opinion, it fits that Paladin build very well. You could also do it the other way around, like start with a Hollow Knight, invest into Radiance and buy um, the other armors and items from Dunmire instead, but I think that this is a much better option in my opinion. There are other alternatives in there too, including this really, really cool Dark Angel kind of uh, armor that you can get a bit later on, but I'm going to cover this in a different video as it's a bit complicated to find it and it's going to take quite a bit of time to explain it. But what's not complicated to get are some of the starting items and accessories. So for example, you can already get a really good shield for free, very close to Skyrest. So what you need to do in fact is to head over right here in the same room that eventually Dunmire moves into. You're going to notice this gate, but you can actually pass through it if you activate your lamp. And normally that shield is going to be just behind this second gate. However, at first this is going to be locked and needs to be opened from the other side. So what you have to do is actually go to the side of the castle, progress the normal way all the way up until this bigger area, and then make your way down to the cliff and just follow this side of the cliff all the way in the back of the castle until you reach this um, lift area that will bring you to the final location and eventually you're going to reach that place where you can get the shield outright. Now, in terms of some of the accessories, you can get the Mine Owner Ring, which gives you a boost to your stamina regeneration very early on. Basically, once you reach the village right here with the bell going into the frost region, from this waypoint, you're going to notice a couple of enemies and a suspended corpse right here with an item upon it. Just take it down with a ranged attack and this is going to give you that ring right away. There's also the Defaced Ring. This gives you three points into vitality, which is really good at first. But you need to actually progress a bit into kind of like this second area with um, the storms going on and the rain. So you're going to have to make your way the normal way up until you see these enemies. And instead of going up, 
you're going to take the ladder in the back here and go downward just progress a bit more and it's going to be right behind this shack right above this corpse so immediately grab it and there's finally another one that further boosts your hp value which is the relic of perpetuation however for this you're going to have to progress all the way a bit until the bell room so this is also a farm area but essentially make your way a little bit until you see this um, small lake with a cascade in the background and activate your other realm jump in and simply follow the path until you reach outside now that ring is going to be right there at the end of those platforms there are going to be some enemies in there but you're going to want to make your way in there defeat them and grab it from the statue it's going to carry you quite a bit since the difference in hp value can be very good early on when you don't have much points into vitality and that is pretty much it with the build no real downsides here to be honest you kind of have everything you have survivability you have the damage you have range capabilities and everything can be achieved from relatively early on which means you will fare very well compared to many other builds out there of course there are other very strong builds too but this just like works so well out of the gate but that's pretty much it with the video also totally check out some of the others i made for lords of the fallen including some of the biggest mistakes that i wish i knew earlier as well as how to get some of the best items early on you're going to find the videos right now on the screen and i'll see you guys in the next video